Welcome to Jay's Yagi. This is where I share my experience, my journey, my story in audio. Today, we're talking about experiences in cables. Or more specifically, not just experiences in cables, but a peer-reviewed paper demonstrating that there's a difference in cables, sonically speaking. How about that? So, welcome back. I want to tell you that there is a difference in cables and I know that every time I talk about this people are turned off because cables. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Jokes aside, there has been multiple cases of measurements posted shown over and over again that cables make no sonic differences. And there's a big controversy around cables and that's why this paper is so important. Now this is a 14 page long peer reviewed paper by University of South California uh, by you know, Dr. Conchor and I will post this for you to download and read I encourage you to in the link description below. But in this video I want to go over some of the summary of what I read and also where I find important. Now we're not going to go over the entire paper because that's going to be bunch of jumbo jumbo and you know it's gonna be a long video but I think the key point here are very very important and very interesting at least for me as someone who wants to understand scientifically why I perceive, perceive the things I perceive now I've told you guys over and over again that I've heard a difference in cables when I was working in a high-end retail store but again in my stereo setup and a lot of people have been asking for scientific data, blind A-B testing, and in fact, we have a blind A-B testing video, but again, blind A-B testing is, you know, can create a lot of false positives as, as well as false negatives. So this paper also talks about that as well towards the summary. Now, I just want to draw your attention to what I said that probably flew by your heads, and that's the word big controversy. Every time there's a big controversy, it really means that there's two group of people or more that has a different opinion, right? So in this case, we have a group of people that have heard a difference in cables and believe in cables. And then there's the people, the measurement folks that either heard it for themselves that there's no difference or, you know, solely relies on measurements alone to make that decision. So other case, it means that there's a group of people and a substantial group of people, as far as I can tell, that has heard a difference in cables, including myself. And as someone who has a background knowledge in science, who has a scientific background and has a day job as a researcher like me, what that shows me is that there is a need to investigate. And that is how science works. See, how science works is not just saying there's no possibility, there's no possibility, there's no possibility, you guys are all crazy. Instead of that, if there's a group of people that are experiencing the same thing, reporting an experience over and over again on a consistent basis, then that causes for an investigation instead of saying they are insane. Because while it's easy to group a bunch of people and call them insane, the fact of the matter is maybe, just maybe all these audio files are not insane and maybe what we are measuring is not the end story maybe we're measuring not the correct things maybe possible well that's usually how scientific studies go i mean when we first learned about the unconscious mind and it was brought up a lot of respected philosophers and researchers at the time ridiculed it and it was not welcomed you know they said we can't diagnose it we can't see it we can't touch it it's not real and these were respected scientists and philosophers and doctors at the time now it's ridiculous to us that they're you know they're suggesting that because we know we have an unconscious mind in a similar way this is what happens in this paper dr contour goes well maybe we're not measuring the right things maybe we should measure other things so he goes into a series of measurements that is outside of the norm, meaning, yes, we've measured the frequency response, we've measured conductance, you know, all these parameters that makes a cable a cable, but we haven't measured anything outside of that. 
So instead, he does a series of measurements, again, it's 14 pages long, where he measures this and reports this. And at the end of the day, the biggest difference is that there was a difference in time domain, which is significant and which is related to sonic perception. And one thing that I want to draw your attention to is the summary portion here where he specifically states essentially that human hearing is very sensitive and very underestimated by many people. And yeah, I, I can't agree with him more there. I agree with him like 110% because human hearing is very sophisticated. There is no microphone in this world, even binaural microphones uh, do not 100% uh, you know, replicate human hearing. They don't they don't do what human hearing do. And so we perceive things very differently and we've often talked about this on this on, on my channel here uh, that you know we, we perceive things and we underestimate human hearing greatly because when it comes to human hearing, it's connected to brain and it's connected to other sensory matters within us that all combined creates a perception, a reality. And that is a different topic for a different day because it goes far beyond the scope of this video. So again, the point here is that it's very hard to replicate human hearing, period. So at the end of the day, I think this test or this paper, I don't think it's the be and end all. It still needs to be replicated. It still needs to be uh, in the further research in this you know, domain, time domain thing. And I think it's not just time domain. I think there's other parameters that we could measure and we could further this research. But again, that is up to the researchers and so on. I'm so, I'm so glad that this study came out and I'm excited uh, to learn and read more about these things because it goes beyond the scope of what we've been doing. I mean, I love, I mean, I just love, and I'm being sarcastic here, uh, being hammered with measurements that over and over again tells you the same thing. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You're crazy. You're crazy and you're crazy. But this test demonstrates something entirely that maybe, and ask the question, maybe not everyone is insane, right? Not every audiophile is uh, prone to pseudoscience and that's all there's to it. Uh, and I'm not, again, taking off the pseudoscience you know, off the table. That's very much has to do with perception. And again, that's a different matter entirely, another topic for another day that goes beyond the scope of this video. But I think this is promising. It goes into the right direction, in my opinion, which you know is exciting. And I think science should be exciting. And I think there's a very clear difference between the people that uh, focus on measurements or dedicated to measurements. I think those people are dedicated to measurements, not science, because science is about further research. It's about you know hypotheses that may or may not not come to light. And this is one case scenario where we're seeing something new for the first time. And I think that's kind of cool and that's awesome to learn about. So I encourage you to read it and I hope this video was helpful. I thought that portion and that concept and what he's going for here is very, very scientific and what I associate with science, at least for me. So I thought I would share it very briefly and pull your attention towards this paper. So that's pretty much it. If this video was helpful to you and enjoyable, then make sure to click that like button and you know make sure to subscribe. It doesn't cost you anything, but it helps me out greatly in making these videos. So I'll see you guys on the next one. Until next time.